Welcome to this episode number 77 of your next trade called today China Stimulus. As always, if you like what you're seeing today, put a comment, put a like or subscribe to the channel. So the long awaited Chinese stimulus finally came out. Uh, that's something we mentioned last week and we saw some price actions telling us that, you know, something was about to come. And guess what? This week we had this massive Chinese stimulus. So let's go through the Chinese stimulus. Cut, cut, cut. So we got three cuts here. That is to obviously to help the, the pressure on the housing market, on the economy. And then we got some payments and payments and, and mar market injections. So overall, the big number to have and to look at is this 560 billion roughly of stimulus, which makes versus the 18 trillions of the Chinese GDP, roughly 3% of the economy. So the Politburo this week decided to inject 3% into the Chinese economy. Here, there is absolutely no surprise. Um, the numbers, the GDP, Chinese GDPs were lower than expected, lower than the 5%. And what is interesting as well is timing is everything. So as we discussed, there were good chances that, you know, this um, stimulus was coming. But as well, if you are looking into the stock market, into financial markets, what you will see is the Chinese market will be closed from Tuesday onwards for uh, the whole week. So most of the time, central banks are very active just before something, you know, is, is closing like we have in, in China. So this is a strong signal uh, that the Politburo is uh, is keen on, obviously, re-injecting money into the system. Uh, going forward, the question is, are they going to be doing more? more and as well are they going to give, be going more into fiscal stimulus so the translation into the stock market has been obviously Shanghai up 15 percent on the week as we're going to see later uh, the overall sectors industries that benefited uh, from and are benefiting from China have been very strong for the week so strong Chinese stimulus 15 percent up for stock so if we look at the week two date, let's go immediately to the week two date um, asset performance. Here, this is China, 15%, 16% almost uh, for the equity market. If we look at the S&P, up 0.6%, 1%. So last weekend, we were right on the Chinese stimulus, but we were wrong on the seasonality. We flagged that after the expiry that we have in September, most of the time, I think it was two thirds of the time the equity market will be done. And guess what? Thanks to this huge Chinese stimulus, uh, stocks were up 0.6% for the for the S&P. But if you think about this big move in China and the stimulus, um, only 0.5% roughly for the S&P is, is not a big move. If we look at Europe, Europe very strong. The reason is the following. Uh, Europe is obviously the second derivative of China, if you want to say. There is a lot of exposure through luxury, through auto cars, through even industrial. So when China is supposed to be doing better, uh, Europe is benefiting from it. If you look as well at crypto up on the week, interestingly, WTI weaker uh, with copper stronger. So copper makes sense, industrial um, and the overall economy, the Chinese economy uh, expected to uh, be stronger in the next six to 12 months. For WTI, um, we had the demand that is expected to go higher from, from China. But in the meantime, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, which is supply, there are talks that actually Saudi Arabia is uh, now uh, giving up on these hundred dollar barrels and it's um, it's just uh, uh, pretty okay or okay probably not the word but uh, uh, that supply will come and they will uh, increase the supply going forward so that is why we get the barrel uh, below 70. if we look at the week to date industry performance and as always i want to compare with the s p and and the, the nasdaq as you can see you get many winners here so there has been a broadening of the uh, U.S. equity market, uh, where uh, we saw uh, some of the, obviously, the cyclicals, the steel, the metals and minings doing very, very well, and obviously emerging market, EEM, why? Because China, I think, is making 60% of the index, so when China is doing well, uh, emerging market is doing well as well, and we are talking roughly 7% on the week. So 
Looking at the sector performance materials, really the outperformer, uh, it's, it's the same as before. This is the Chinese stimulus, um, and that is helping uh, the, uh, the sector pretty much. Anything that was defensive, healthcare, financials, uh, no, sorry, healthcare, uh, uh, consumer discretionary actually doing, doing so. A bit of divergence between names, but overall, uh, uh, broadening of the um, of the equity market, as you see here, the S&P is there, and you get winners. So, uh, broadening and a bit of dispersion into the market. What about the rates? Uh, going into rates, and this is the 375 on the US 10 year. So we have been flattish on the week, uh, more or less the same on the 10 versus the 2 at 20 bips. So not much of a change. And this is the same for the Fed fund rates uh, between this Friday and the Friday before. Not much of a change. If we look at the next uh, FOMC meeting, so we get one on in November. Expectations are roughly, if you compare 553 to 553, that means we're going to have a 25 bips cut in November, and we should have another 25 bips cut um, in December. So next two meetings, minus 0.25%. If we look now at the VIX, and this is the interesting one, the interesting part, if you've been trading on Friday, you saw maybe that the VIX went from 15.5 to 17%. So the market was uh, roughly up 0.1 or 0.2% on the day. And in the meantime, VIX was at 17%. So if you look at the last 20 years, I think you only get uh, 24 occurrences where it happened when the VIX uh, moved that much. And in the meantime, um, markets small up. The reason is we have a market that has been mostly driven by uh, a collar. And the collar is a structure that is put in place by one of JP Morgan big fund. Um, if you look at the size of this fund, this is not as big, obviously, as the market. Uh, but in terms of liquidity at the end of the month, end of the quarter, that is mostly driven uh, the market. This is something that we flagged at the start of the month when we talked about the 57. 750 calls um, that uh, this fund uh, is, is short. Um, and as you we're going to see later, uh, the whole week, um, the S&P has been trading around the 57.50. So you, there is a feel of, you know, we are going into October uh, where some market participants are expecting um, this, uh, obviously, this color uh, to expire. And later on, we could have a move um, after. So it's a, a pre, pre trading um, this, um, um, this, sorry, this expiry in the, um, of the, of the color. So let's look now at the, at the technical analysis, starting with the S&P. So S&P, the trend is still, my friend, still going up. Um, not, not much of a change. As I said, uh, this week we have been trading uh, sideways. NASDAQ, uh, actually, if you look at the NASDAQ, no new highs still. Um, uh, so this is, that has been underperforming the overall uh, S&P. Uh, Russell has been pretty strong as well from the 2100 to the 2250, uh, but very similar to the NASDAQ. Looking at oil, something that we mentioned. So oil, um, there was a bit of a bounce on the 67 level, uh, $67. This is something that we flagged on the community. This is an important level. Um, this is still a downtrend, but there is at least some fight around $67 uh, between uh, the demand coming from China and the supply coming both from the US and, and the Saudis. Copper, uh, copper pretty strong. Uh, Dr. Copper uh, telling you that um, we are expecting a restart of the uh, Chinese engine. Uh, so the chart will be for this week more or less the same as the Shanghai, uh, the Shanghai index, which is this one uh, where we had a massive move of 15%. Of so Shanghai, you know, this, this trend has been broken. So this is this is pretty good. We we could see you know another 10% up uh, on the index. Having said that, if you long Chinese in the, uh, Chinese assets, uh, it's on your own risk. Um, as you do know, you don't know when you long ADR, for example, in the US. Uh, those are uh, uh, shells. Shells that means you are really not owning any assets uh, if you own any assets when you long uh, China. So be extremely careful. I do know there is a lot of. Uh, uh, noise and and you know you uh, people are saying now be long China, uh, be careful what you are owning because in terms of risk management this is probably your worst case scenario in terms of counterparty risk. 
What about uh, gold? Um, um, oh, sorry, look, gold is not this one. Hop, this is the gold here. Um, up, it's going to be updating, hopefully. So let's look at gold and how the gold has been doing. Um, so we are 26.58 now in gold, making new highs after new highs. Feels almost like, you know, this uh, uh, fear of inflation, fear of slowdown, recession is pushing more and more investors into gold. Euro dollar trading sideways between 110 and 112. Uh, so that has been the, the, the trading range. And this one, um, dollar yen, uh, this is the one that I should be, we should be looking at because we had a big move on Friday with the election of the new prime minister in Japan. And in the meantime, if you look at this candle, this is the one we went from 146 to 140 to 40. So something that we flagged over and over when the Japanese yen is very strong, what happens? It's weakening a lot the uh, stocks. Okay, so a strong correlation when Japanese yen is weak, uh, uh, Japanese stocks are very strong. So what happened on Friday, if you look at the US, uh, the US uh, the, uh, futures on the Nikkei, which is the uh, Japanese index, it was down 5%. So that's going to be interesting on Monday to see what happens, because if you remember or not at the start, of uh, August this year, we had the meltdown in the equity market in, in, in Japan due to the end of the carry trade when the Japanese yen went from 162 to 142 very quickly. Uh, so that will be your start of August, which is here. And in the meantime, you know, stocks all over the world didn't like it. We got the, the Nikkei, which was down 20%. So a bit of a risk of scenario start of August. Let's see uh, what uh, Monday is bringing, but you, what we should expect is is the the futures in on the Japanese market to be opening down. Another one that I flagged as well is the DAX. If you look at Europe, making new highs, uh, same as before. The trend is your friend. As I said, uh, Europe was very strong this week as a second derivative of China. Uh, luxury cars, as I said, very very strong. So DAX making new highs, SXXP making new highs. Finally. I want to flag Nike, so this is something that we discussed last week. Nike is coming with their earnings, their results. I think this is Tuesday after the close. Um, and I want to flag, you know, the numbers that we see here. This is the sales, this is the EPS, and this is the free cash flow. So the stock has been really struggling. This is not about magic. Um, this is mostly because the numbers over the last three, four years have been flattish. We are talking the sales, we are talking EPS, and we are talking free cash flow. So they just changed. The, the CEO, but when you are looking at a stock, uh, you should be looking at fundamentals and make sure that, you know, the fundamentals are fitting your view. So now with the new CEO, there are hopes that, you know, something is going to be uh, turning. We do have like a new shareholders like Big Bill Ackman and Bill Ackman has been pushing for new CEOs, has been pushing for things to turn. Uh, but so far, the sales, again, EPS, free cash flow, pretty flattish for the next two to three years and not much of a good news over the last couple of years. So let's see if we can have some better um, um, momentum on the stock and better story going forward. So let's go now back into what happened for the week. So as I said, you know, we were expecting, I was expecting bad seasonality. The market was flattish, roughly a bit up, you know, uh, uh, on the week. But most of the time, the market traded around, uh, so this is for the future, but if you look at the S&P, uh, around 57.50. So 57.50, as I said, this is the the uh, JP Morgan color, the call uh, that we flagged at the start of, the, of this month. If we look at the VIX, as I said, on Friday, so go into your trading chart, look at the VIX on Friday, we went from 15.50 to 17%. Why? Because the market is expecting uh, this uh, pinning around 57.50 to end and so some volatility uh, to be happening. So we got the Chinese stimulus. I want to give you a chart here. This is the European luxury. So we are talking uh, Dior, LVMH, uh, Hermes, all the names that you have in, in, in the European luxury versus the stock 600, which is the equivalent of the uh, S&P 500 for, for Europe. And as you can see, since 2000, it has 
has been on the uh, outperforming like really really big over the last two years it has been a bit struggling especially over the last let's say 12 to 18 months the reason has been the uh, disappointing numbers from from china so when China is putting a stimulus that has been helping stocks like LVMH, as I said, carrying uh, even Montclair to be up 15, 20% on the week. So the second derivative. So when you have something happening, obviously you can go for the index, but you have the right to be thinking and to think what are the most exposed uh, sectors or industry to uh, the news that has been coming out. Finally, uh, PCE lower, this is for inflation, so that was on Friday a bit lower inflation, but, but something that I flagged as well last weekend, uh, which is the, uh, where is the, the um, performance coming uh, from the S&P. So if you've been trading the S&P 500 this year, only in trading, let's say from, from, the, from the open to the close, what you will have is roughly 3.5% performance. Okay, so if you buy and you sell during the day, you will be making 3.5%. But if you've been holding that position from the close to the open, you'll be making 15% or more. So in other words, most of the performance is coming from the overnight moves. And as we saw this week, uh, when the market opened up by 1.5%, or that was last week, and this week as well, there was a gap. Um, the most of the performance is coming from gaps. And you can do exactly the same charts since 1990 or 1980. Um, the market will be almost flat on the day but uh, making uh, really uh, dollars overnight. So what about the catalyst going forward? Um, I keep on, on, on giving you those, uh, those seasonality, but I, this is interesting to look at seasonality because this is the odd. So now September has been pretty good despite uh, the, the flagged bad seasonality. Now we are going into October and we have the election on the 5th of November in the US. Um, and I wanted to look at, you know, how the market has been doing in October month. Uh, uh, most recently during election. So 2020 market was on 2.77%, 2016 minus 2%, 2012 minus 2%, 2008 minus 16%, 2004 1.4%, 2000 minus 50 bips, and 1996 plus 26 So in other words, over the last four elections, market was down between one to three percent, roughly two percent. So, if you play the odds, um, if you look at seasonality again, uh, October uh, normally is a good month. Okay, we are talking one point six percent on average. But if you look elections when there is a bit of uncertainty, and especially this time uh, between Harris and Mr. Trump, um, you do have a questioning, and that explained, you know, the uh, the 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 big odds of the market, market in October to be done. So this is for October. In terms of macro, we do have the PMIs as always on the first day of the month. So we are talking manufacturing, ISM manufacturing. And on Thursday, we get this the services one. As well, big week for uh, the uh, job market as always with the jolts. On Tuesday, we get the ADP, we get the weekly claims on Thursday, and we get the big one, the uh, Friday NFP. Last two for the S&P, we were done roughly 1.7, 1.8% for the S&P. So as you can see, numbers were uh, digested pretty well before. And over the last couple of months, not that great. So again, this is something to, to keep in mind. As I said, China is closed from Tuesday onwards, so not expect, don't expect so, so much news coming from it. We have as a flag for the third time today, and everyone is flagging it. So this is the JP Morgan uh, color with the 5750. Uh, and as well, come, coming with that, you do have like the end of the month. So on Monday, you should be expecting at least in the last two hours or hour, some volatility in the equity market. Finally, S&P weekly straddle 1.6%. So we are expecting the S&P to be moving by plus or minus 1.6%. And as I said, not that many earnings coming. We do have like Nike, as I said, on, on Tuesday, and we do have like Fed speakers as well. So this is it for, for the catalyst, um, where the implied volatility with the VIX uh, went from 15 uh, to 17%.
realized volatility this week has been absolutely dead, uh, where uh, due to this uh, uh, pinning around the 5750 level, uh, hopefully there's going to be a bit more uh, volatility going forward, especially with the elections coming. So. In terms of ID generation, it's pretty obvious that uh, the Chinese, uh, um, the Chinese, sorry, um, stimulus uh, should uh, give us a lot of opportunities. Uh, there is another um, story that we are looking at. So the ports in uh, in the U.S. Um, due to a strike, and I think it's 60 to 70 percent of the workers uh, where the, the the ports could be closing. So it's going to have a lot of uh, impact on the supply chain. It's going to have some impact, obviously, on inflation and some industry that are importing. So that is something that we are looking and keeping an eye on if we are part of the community. Uh, so this is the community on um, on the, sorry on Discord. So if you can, if you want to join, you can. There is one free channel, but if you have been a subscriber of the 4x4 and or the mentoring, you will have access to 20 channels. Otherwise, if you get any questions about trading, I know that this week have uh, more and more inquiries into uh, the mentoring, especially for this end of the year, start of next year. So send me an email. Other than that, have a good trading week. Bye-bye.